guest who's having technical difficulties, I guess, but it's giving me a good opportunity to kind of fill you in on what's been happening with me. Um, I just got uh, back from a trip to Nashville. Now, you know, I am on a quest for the best Americana country around the globe. And this weekend I was asked to participate in a fundraiser in Nashville. Ah. Kenny's trying to log on. I think he's having some problems. So, um, ah, he's here. So anyway, so I, I did travel to Nashville. And you know what the interesting question I got? There were 15 of some of the best Americana artists around. They were for this fundraiser by Caden Gordon. And what happened was um, people would actually come up to me and go, oh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Pennsylvania. And they'd go, is there country music in Pennsylvania? And it's still kind of, I find it amusing that Nashville thinks that they're the only place that has good music. Now, I will tell you what they do have. Nashville has music 24-7. You know, 10 o'clock in the morning, you walk into Just Love Coffee and there is someone playing for you. You know, there's so many opportunities for musicians. I'll give you that. But I know there is great music all over this country. So that's on my mission. And tonight I'm bringing you Kenny Seltzer is with me. He's made it. Uh, let me bring him on here. There you are, Kenny. You were stressing me out a little bit. Oh, I can't hear you. All right, we're waiting for Kenny. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there we are. I couldn't get in. I just was uh, taking a long time with my computer and Chrome and sorry about that. Oh, you know what? We've been there, we've been there, yeah. but you're here and yeah, that's important and we can hear you and we're yeah. gonna hear your great music in a little bit. But you heard my introduction that Nashville seems to think that you know, they're the only place you're going to hear good music. And we're here to show them that there is great music all over the country. So, Kenny, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a guitar player, singer, songwriter. I've been playing guitar since I was 13, which is many years ago. And I've been playing just all over the Massachusetts and some New England area for a long time. Clubs, coffee houses, farmers markets, a few concerts here and there. Anything I can get over the years, you know, just keep on plugging away. I've made albums. I had, uh, I just put out a few months ago my fifth solo album. I had a bunch of albums in the duo back in the 90s. Um, I used to own recording studios, so um, I got into um, playing out. I was playing out a lot when I was younger, like 20s. And then I, for a long time, I was doing nothing but recording, basically. I mean, recording studios. So, um, uh, I just continue to play. I love playing music and just all kinds of music. I love, I just love playing music. So. And you're involved in all of it. I mean, you play, you're, um, you record, you're, but you're not only that, you had your own studio. So you were engineering for a while, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, a lot of behind the scenes things. And, you know, I was thinking while I was in Nashville, just how many moving parts there is to the music business, yeah. you know? You know, Nashville has so many opportunities for musicians to play, you know, along uh, Broadway. Um, I mean, every place you turn, every time you turn around, you're going to bump into a guitar player. And um, th there's always live music going. I think it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and, and goes all night. But people, there's a lot of that things that go behind the scenes to make all of that happen. There's sound men, you know, uh, social media. And um, it sounds like your your niche was, you know, the production end of things, and you like playing live. 
Well, I did both at the same time. I mean, uh, back, I owned some recording studios, and then I got back into playing. It was around 1990. And I got into the acoustic scene in uh, New England, and that was a very intense scene. A lot of good players. There's not, there's not a whole lot of business in Massachusetts and Boston, but there's an incredible amount of music with the schools and with, uh, I know there was um, just big, big scene. So I got into the acoustic scene and I started uh, doing sound and duplication. I owned a CD, a cassette uh, duplication graphics business. Uh, but this is all at the same time I was playing. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. at the time, in the 90s, it was not either one, meaning it wasn't just one, it was just both. Right, right. And then in the, I just kept on doing it and went to music school for a while and got into recording studios and got into uh, doing some pro sounds for the past 15, 20 years, more a long, long time ago. I don't do a whole lot now. I do do sound, but not, you know, I used to do like Johnny D. Do you know anything about Massachusetts? I've been to Massachusetts. Yeah. I did smaller clubs um, and like 250 seaters or 300 seaters, like the bull run a little bit, but mostly smaller. Things. So that when I say pro sound, I don't mean big arenas, you know, so, mm. but I still, I still do sound. I'm doing um, small shows every month. And then I'm doing a, I do a couple of bands here and there, but uh, I just continue to play. That's really what I love doing. Yeah. And um, uh, I think I have another album in the works, but meaning that I just started writing down songs. <laughs> right, right, right. Past that. Always have lyrics all over the place, right? Yeah. Um, I have a lot of songs finished. It's just a lot of work. And so I have to do the pre, pre, pre production for the album. Right. You know, figuring out what I really want to do and how I want to approach it. Um, this last album I did was a lot of it was it started off as a duo album because I played a duo with a guy named Steve Gilligan, and and then when COVID hit, it evolved into well anything goes now. I'm just gonna so I just kept on developing it, and a lot of it was um, putting drums over songs, which is not easy to do. A lot of drummers, a lot of good drummers, can't do it. And was it live? I thought you putting live drums over songs. Meaning that I had songs, I had the basics done with the guitars and some vocals, and they had to play to what was already there in the uh, studio. That's tricky depending yeah. on, you know, the session musicians and stuff. I mean, nowadays it's, it's not too hard to get everything, the timing done, you know, logistically, but back in the day, if it wasn't lined up, Right. And a lot of drummers actually turned me down, even good drummers. I mean, I know some a drummer, a friend of mine, uh, we used to play with one of the Neville brothers and he said, I can't do it. I just can't do it. it, you know. it that, that could be a tough gig because again, if it's not lined up, you almost have to be out of time. So there everyone's in time. Like Right. And even if you're in time, yeah, you drift a little bit and then yeah. you have to tighten up afterwards. And it's just, it's, it's a, a bigger, it's a kind of production that, um, I enjoyed the process, but that was a, kind of a hard, hard thing to do. So this time around, I'm going to not do it that way. I'm going to do live basics. And, yeah. And um, I think there's a reason that they, they do that. It's just going to save you so much time and energy. Yeah. Yeah. And you so, know. and I have a lot of songs finished, um, but I just don't have anything. I'm going to have to start from scratch because I had a lot of songs I worked on for a long time, the uh, past three, four years. It did make it this last album, but I don't, I don't want to do it that way anymore. I want to do, go back to the basic. Basics meaning basic tracks in the studio. Yeah. And yeah. And then, then I can and then, then then you can fix everything else. I don't know. It's just I always like that process anyway. I like the I like the interaction in the studio between musicians. Yeah. Than, well, it's than, interesting, you know. That's the standard way to do it, you know. The drums, you add to, and you know, then you start layering on top of that. Well, Nashville, if you go down there, and I was down in a musician row, and I just was just bumping around, they still have they all they do a quick practice. You can go in there, and they they kind of do a jam session on what you want to do, 
and then they all play live. They all go to their different sound booths, right. mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I, I like the layering. I like to be there with each piece and. Right. You know, I mean, so it's, it's a combination. You get the basics done. You get the drums, the bass, um, the arrangement, of course, and then you can you can fix up. As long as the drums are good, you can just start adding and fixing, and if you have to, you know, punch in a bass, punch in a guitar, punch redo the vocals. So, it's, you know, I love that process. It's totally different than live. I like I like live playing. I but, like creating, writing yeah. songs. I find almost the editing of it very tedious. It is. It is. Very That's, tedious. Yeah. It, you know, it's patience at, you know, the most when you're, when you're going over things and lining things up and, all right, we need another layer of this because we only have six layers of guitars right now. And Yeah. Yeah, and, and it is tedious. It took me, um, even though I owned recording series before, I decided to mix this album by myself because usually, usually you at this point of time you you, you get a rec you record it and you get a mixer, a professional mixer. Mm -hmm. I decided to do get into mixing, and since my high standards are pretty high, I spent a long time learning a lot of the pro things, pro ways that people who do it all the time, the mixers do it. And I had mm -hmm. some kind of consultation. I had this guy named Chris Billius, who's a real master at everything. He helped me out with ideas and sounds. He didn't do the work, but he told me he suggested things. So it took me a long time to do this last album. Yeah, it does take a lot of time. I know, I know my producer, Tom Joya, um, who's done a lot of work for Sony and a lot of, you know, industry work goes to him uh, for mixing. Um, and he actually has lessons on uh, his YouTube channel, and he's the guy that you could always reach out to. And um, I, I find there are uh, uh, very generous <laughs> uh, people in the business. You know, the people yeah. behind the scenes and stuff are always willing to lend a hand and um, like right. that. Yeah. So well, let's let's talk, about, let's talk about your music because again, I went to Nashville and they always ask me, "Is there country music in?" Pennsylvania? Well, yeah. Why well, country music? Is there country music in the north? Are you bringing it to the north? What do you? What's going on? Well, there is country music up here. In fact, I knew some people back in the 90s who were uh, really, really good, except that the Nashville and the uh, uh, didn't country music in Massachusetts. How can that be? Mm -hmm. but, so a lot of these people who it was like a bias against them just from, because they were from Massachusetts. Anyway, um, I don't want to go into that anymore, but I um, I think there's a lot of good, all different kinds of music up here. And a um, um, lot, of, lot of country, a lot of Americana, a lot of Americana these days. I don't know what these, there's yeah. so much crossover with country. Country, I mean, Beyonce has a country album out now. I haven't heard that. Yeah, I've I've heard it. It's it's gotten a lot of play on Sirius Radio, um, and if you listen to it, there are really some strong country elements. But you go, you know, is that Americana? Is it's not quite solid, you know, country, you know. But that's country music right now. If they yeah. don't know what to do with a the song, they throw it's country. You know, it's Americana. Right. I mean, uh, I, uh, I have an affinity more toward the old country, you know, the uh, outlaw people, Merle Haggard, um, that kind of stuff. Um, the new stuff over the years, um, yeah, I guess there's a lot of great music. It's just that what is really country now? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I found in your in your uh right in there with it everyone who writes country songs has a song about a town right mm -hmm. and you do too uh, but you're leaving this town that's the, the first one that we're going to be playing yeah yeah that was the <laughs> i made the video yeah um, tell me about that well in 2020 when COVID hit and we all lost gigs and everything stopped um i i I'm, i felt really isolated and um which most a lot of people did and I didn't know what to do so I decided to write a song about the experience except that I didn't really want to depress people which um, so I made it upbeat and 
um, more to a general song than specifics, even though there's specifics, but it wasn't really an emotional uh, nightmare kind of song. Does that make sense? I, I, I think I want, so. I didn't want to go too deep into, oh, what was me, all that kind of stuff. And I really wanted to get out of here. You know, I felt so stuck. So I called it, I'm leaving this town. Oh, I see. So we're stuck in general, and the, the, your phrase was, "I'm leaving this. I got to get out. I got to get it. I got to get out. What's and happening the, here? Yeah. The town I live in is rural. I don't know how I ended up here, but it's it's um, it's basically a, a wealthier town, even though I'm not wealthy, in the middle of woods, about maybe five thousand people, and there's nothing nothing here. There's one country store. You have to drive fifteen minutes to get anywhere. Okay. So yes. I really, that made it even more isolated. So I knew this uh, friend of mine, uh, Claude, who was a videographer. He had a studio and a camera, and he said, let's make a video. So I said, okay. He made a video with me before. Um, and um, so we just, we had no budget and no time limit. So we just went out there and did a lot of shooting. And then kind of pieced it together. I sang to the uh, lyrics when I was out there. We had a little, um, I think it might have been a phone. I just, um, I sang to the tracks. Um, I mean, lip sync. So, right, so, right, right. And it, it came out pretty well. I mean, I'm not the most visual person, but um, I, still, I, th I still like it. And it came out fun, you know. I um I think that where did they get where did they get some play? Alternate um there's a organization alternate music uh, alternate Americana alternate yeah all country that's it is a big they, bunch of buzzword they put it on their front page which is good you know along with a few other videos so um you know right. it's, it's good it's a good it's a good good video it's a fun video. Well, let's 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 give it a listen. Okay. Sitting around, I'm wearing a frown. Ain't got no go, I'm moving too slow I want to see you once more Once before I go I'm leaving this town Won't be back no more I'm starting to fade Feeling afraid Nothing to gain, it's hurting my brain I want to open the door And then I have to go I'm leaving this town I won't be back no more I will miss everything that I see Don't know if you can see It's coming down on me It's raining so hard I am soaked to my bones And I feel like I will never drive I'm looking for my home Yeah, yeah Bye-bye Yeah, yeah No jobs to be found, it's all over and done I'm up late at night but ain't having fun Got nobody to call, nothing on TV I'm leaving this town, I won't be back no more Send best wishes, I will need them when I go Send thoughts and prayers, got a long hard path to hold Put on my new walking shoes, put the wind at my back, and take a step to who's where, and then I won't look back. Yeah, yeah. Bye bye. 
Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye. Ooh. Don't know if I will miss everything that I see. Don't know if you can't see it's coming down on me. Raining so hard, I am soaked to my bones, and I feel like I will never dry. I'm looking for my home. Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye. All right, and we are back on The Ranch. The Ranch goes across seven platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. We're all over the place. And for anyone watching, we know I know there's a couple people watching, um, this is interactive. So any comments that you make, we could actually see them and comment and have some fun with it. Um, also, um, in the comments section, um, I was at an autism awareness uh, event over the weekend in Nashville. That's actually why I went. And it just happened to coincide that there is a missing autistic kid, Sebastian, in um, where I was staying, uh, the, whole, the whole neighborhood, Hendersonville. And that's where we had the benefit. So we are raising money for autism, aware, uh, autism awareness, aut autism Tennessee. Um, there really is a, uh, he's, Sebastian's been missing for two weeks and um, they're really starting to worry about what's how, what's going to be the fate of all of this. So I have the link in there. If anyone would like to help for this cause, um, Kaden Gordon um, is the one who puts, one of the people who puts this event together along with the, the great people in, aut in Tennessee for autism. So any way to help. So again, uh, we are on the ranch. Across seven platforms, we are produced by Blast Music 24-7, which really caters to indie artists like myself, like Kenny that we're talking to today. And it's a really a great platform to discover new music for indie artists to put up new music um, and uh, a lot of podcasts, a lot of video shows there. So there's a lot going on on Blast Music 24-7. And speaking of going on, Kenny, I almost didn't recognize you I didn't recognize myself. <laughs> I knew there was something different. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's right. right. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you also noticed that the, there is, it was over the, the, the video is over a few seasons, you know, it was winter and early spring. And we had talked about whether that made a difference or not. We decided that it's been done before that way. So I had different looks, you know, you had different looks. There was snow. There wasn't snow. And there was all Carlisle. There was Carlisle, a place called Carlisle, Massachusetts. But it was interesting because you say, I'm leaving this town, but there's still snow. And then there's not snow in LA. And you're like, is he really leaving this town? Because... I drove away. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see me wave there at the end? Yeah. And that town, by the way, the, the, where I was walking with the guitar, that's Concord, Massachusetts. That's where the um, Revolutionary War started. Oh. Uh, that in Lexington. So now it's 
It's a nice, quiet town with uh, some music, not too much anymore. Um, so. You know, it's what my first college paper, one of my first, well, oh, because I was a history major. Um, we had to write a paper. We had all these eyewitnesses on who fired first at Lexington and Con and we had to decide who fired first, which side, and why, in two pages. And yeah, I, I, I never forget. Knows. I mean, how many papers do you remember? But I remember that paper, and everyone was blaming everyone else. It was like a you know, like a crime scene, you know, investigation. Right. And I don't know if they really even know. And also, Lexington Concord, um, they're they're sort of battling over over the years of where the revolution were really started. You know, oh, that's interesting because one of the statements I read, I thought it was very clear, like these guys were behind a fence and then he came around a corner and I no, think I somebody tripped I mean, the fire. I, I, walk, I walk on the area uh, many times where in Concord where the war supposedly started, the bridge, the bridge there over the Concord River and, you know, battles were drawn, you know, but, but the Lexington, they say that it started there in the green, so it's... it's Good for the tour. Good for tourism, I guess. Yeah, so. yeah. We need to get like Bill Gates on this, like Josh, and not that Bill Gates, Josh Gates. Right. Yeah. Expedition X. Right. Who really? Where, where did that really start? Right. So anyway, that's that was my town. You saw, it's like, you know. It was a fun. It. A, it was a fun video. Yeah. 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 I like it, shooting video. That, that's yeah. Kind I, of I um. You know, this guy Claude, a friend of mine, um, he's also a musician. He he wanted to do more, but he said, "Well, it's tricky because I'm not a, an actor and I don't have the whole lot of experience with producing this kind of stuff." And so if we did another one, he said, well, "Let's get some actors." And I said, "Well, who's going to direct them? You know, it's like it's not so easy. You know, it's easier than you think. I, 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 you know what? I run around towns, right?" And if I need a character, I just look around and go, who wants to be in a video? And people like, will just jump in. I, I, I've yeah, noticed maybe, that. maybe I should do another one. I mean, I have a few other songs that, well, I have a lot of kind of songs, different kind of songs to do. So, um, yeah, yeah, I should do more. They're fun. I, yeah. Well, let's See? talk about the next song, um, Nothing Started, Nothing Game. Or we have two of that we're going to do. Please disregard and Nothing Started. Which one do you want to do first? I like Nothing Started. I mean, I like them both a lot. Nothing Started, Nothing Gain is a really, that's that's what I've been treating as a single more than anything else. I'm, I've okay. been leaving, I'm, I'm leaving this town. It could be a single also. Please okay. disregard is a really, really good song, but it's... Um, it's a little heavier. All right. So let's start with nothing started, nothing gained. Okay. And tell, talk to me about how you came to write that. Well, sometimes I write a lot and sometimes I don't. In 2019, I um, it's actually the only song that I wrote that year, which is crazy because I usually write three, four, five songs a year, uh, which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but to me it's a lot. Uh, it just started out of being, um, I wanted to write an, um, another up-tempo song, um, and it's about the, I, I was sort of trying to figure out whether this relationship I was doing was really real or not, meaning whether it was going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the other person was thinking the same thing. So it was a lot about ambivalence, I don't know if that's the right phrase, but I realized it was more about the confusion of uh, love or being in a relationship. And I think we all know those moments, you know, yeah. I have a song, the dance that you meet someone and you don't know if it's going anywhere. You don't know how much time you want to put into it. Right. And, and I just can't, it just started happening and I just, it took a long time, but it seemed like it came together at the end. I think last few days of December, I really wanted to finish it. <laughs> so the song or the relationship? The song. <laughs> <laughs> The relationship. Well, we'll uh, leave it at that. <laughs> didn't, really, didn't really happen oh, the way so... I wanted it to. Happen. Right. But yeah. I think it's a good song. People really like it. And there was one good. Uh, I like the. There's a lot of stops in the song, and 
And then when I play it solo, people think it's the end. I was playing a, a, a festival in South Carolina solo, and without drums and bass, it really seems like it stops. And I was playing this festival, and it was a, one of those festivals where you bring your own stuff, booze. Yeah. And every time I stopped, this woman said, yay! <laughs> and her friends were... It, it's a tricky song that way, so I extended the... Uh, now when I do a lot of it, I actually extend the vocals over the space a little more, so it seems like it's not in there. But people really like it, and it's, it's getting... It does get some airplay. This one seems to get airplay when I do get airplay. That's awesome. That, yeah. That's always a good thing. And I opened up the song with it because of, uh, I knew it was a uh, more of a um, oh, um, broad based song. You know, it had some country in it, country rock in it, had a lot of things in it. Didn't have a, doesn't have a solo in it though. Well, you know, you made it a, raised a good point too of how you play solo is different than how you play with a band because of those gaps that drums or bass is going to drive. It's it's very yeah. different, and um, I play the songs. A lot of these songs solo or with Steve, the bass player, the same arrangement except it, it feels different and it evolves. It, it turns into something else. Yeah, and um, and. I think I play this song faster solo. I, I play Steve, all my songs faster solo. Exactly. And when I go back to Steve, he's solid as a rock. And then, so, which is great. I love the foundation. I wish you can come to all my solo gigs, but of course you can't. So, you just bring your cajun and just like stomp along, like, you know. Like, yeah, I, I could do that, right? And some people say I think you get a looper, but basically when I play solo, I actually developed a style where I played solos within the song without the chords. And not many people do that, and, not, and, and they might finger pick the song, uh, solo, but I developed a style and it works. And I don't want to get a looper for that. With a looper, you know, you can get the time. Yeah, you do have that, but it is a whole different style. Yeah, I just, you're uh, for me, I don't like it. I, I've heard some people who do it great, and some people who do it okay. And I've, I know some people who um, do it, but they, they, don't, they don't really like it as much, because if you mess up, you really mess up. Yeah, I'm. you know, a little bit is really good. Like you said, some people are really good, but I think some people can overdo it. And there you are, like, getting lost some, in these loops. And some people, they, I saw somebody on um, some YouTube video, and I think it was maybe Facebook, and it took about a minute and a half before they started the song. Yeah. Because they were just building it. It's like, okay, I, that's not, I just, when I play a song, I want to, communicate to the people, entertain them, and I just... Well, again, so it's not... For me. But the style has changed over me. the years. Like the 70s, you had these long intros and bridges, and they don't do that anymore. It's a couple measures in, you know, lyric bridges, yep. you know, pacing of things. And, and, just and with my solos, my songs are long enough. So I don't need to make a five, four, four and a half minute song into a seven minute song. It's this doesn't work. You know, people lose, lose yeah. their attention. You know? Yeah, attention spans. Let's talk about attention spans when we get back. We're going to listen to Nothing Started, Nothing Gained. Nothing started, nothing gained. I'm out here in the pouring rain. Looking left, I'm looking right I'm out here in the dead of night I spend all my time worrying about you I wonder if what we say is really true I don't know why I feel this way I do know that I want to stay Going up and then I'm down First I smile, then I frown I spend all my time thinking about you Wonder what in the world I'm going to do Snap your fingers, I'm in a spell Pick me up from where I fell Wake and save me from this dream I'm sure you know just what I mean Nothing's changed about how I feel I want to know what is real Give me back the time I've wasted It's about time that I've wasted I love you I love you I should have known what I was doing I should have seen what was brewing I would have said a little more There 
of things I ignored I will always feel I was wrong I will always feel I took too long Stand up straight, I know I can't think hard and long And make a plan, another night in an empty house It is quieter than a mouse Like all the times that went before Restless so I face the floor I put too much in to stop now I will have to get to you somehow I love you I love you Can't find the words To tell you anything Okay, we are back on the ranch. This is an episode of Blast Music 24-7 produces this. We go across seven platforms. So, and it's interactive, as you notice, people are commenting on your song and we can see them or respond back. We always love the comments. And um, yeah, you seem yeah. to really, really love your... Uh, Downward scales that dun 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 from the I love you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my friend Steve is a bass player in this. So he said that's the shortest chorus in existence. <laughs> I love you. I love you. It works, right? Well, it, but it, it it also says a lot because if you listen to the other lyrics around it, this is this is a song where it is saying I love you enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um. I thought the, I was happy with the lyrics. Um, it seemed coherent. It seemed it just worked. Yeah. Right, and the changing of pe the pacing of it, you know, the tempo kind of changes a little bit, and it kind of changes the tone of the song too. And you understand yeah. that yeah. saying "I love you" isn't quite getting you <laughs> what you wanted. But that's that's what life is, right? <laughs> And you write about it, that we're songwriters, you know. There's nothing to do in situations like that but write a song. Yep. I mean, people have asked me if this is, um, my stuff is autobiographical. And there's a lot of autobiographical in it, but there's also a lot of um, extrapolation. Is that the word? Just, hmm. you know. Yeah, you, you take a, a, a moment in time and you kind of, embellish around it and, and blow it up into a story yeah, or and, and, you know, and I, I feel i feel a lot um so i try to uh, get i try to 
how the feeling portrayed in the song is written. And it doesn't have to be pure autobiography. It doesn't have to be pure fiction. It can be a combination. But this song is pretty real to me, um, meaning there's a lot in there that's real. I mean, happened. Right. So. Right. So, you know, sometimes reality and songs come together for some of the best music. Yeah. 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 You know, um, I'm fortunate or not fortunate. I don't know what you, you decide, but that I don't really have. Um, I mean, I love to get my music played and I want to be liked, but I don't have people breathing down my neck telling me what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's different when you're your own client because you do sound for other people, you do production for other people, but it's different when you're your own client. Yeah. And, um, and I have, uh, I want to be, I've always wanted to be good and I have high standards. So um, I remember playing on the folk scene back in the nineties a lot. And there were some really good songwriters, you know, maybe not commercial songwriters, but they, they knew how to, they knew how to write. And I learned a lot from that scene because when you walk on stage and that's that scene in the nineties, they call it the boot camp of folk music. Mm -hmm. I I had I I was always being compared because to some really good players, you know, singers and songwriters. So I I had to be good, so I had to learn and develop. So um and that kind of thing helped helped a lot for me, helped just to be around the woman I was playing with, a duo, she was a really good songwriter. And, and so she did most of the, you know, if you played a set, she would do three quarters of it, her song. It wasn't, mm. and um, she's a little better singer than me at the time. Right. That's a whole different story. You know, if there's something about folk music, even country music, because of the imagery, that there's an honesty there that in folk music especially is so transparent yeah there could be a transparency and it could be really good it could be heady but um a lot of the techniques a good song is just amazing to hear whatever genre it is but, and, and uh, um, um i learned how to i learned who i was and i learned a narration a lot of a lot, a lot of people write stories in their world mm -hmm. I mean, story would be like a short story, right? Maybe not long, but so I kept on developing over the years. Just to, I still, I still try to figure out what makes a good song. And the way I do it now is, I, I see if it's a good song, and people, I see how people react to it. You know, the communication. Does that make sense? So it's not just a song because you can have a song that is okay, but People are people are getting it, you know. So I want my songs to affect people. You want them to feel something. I want them to feel something. So is that the most important thing about a song to you? Is how it makes you feel? Well, I have to first. First of all, I have to like the song. I, I mean, I used to when I write, I I kind of tune into my feelings. And if I'm bored or there's something weird about the song at the moment, then there's something I have to fix the song. You know, and, and mm -hmm. so when I finally play it for people, it's vetted. So it gets got by me, <laughs> but now it has to get by the audience. Okay. And they have to like it. And of course, there's different audiences. Some You can play a, a great song for people and they don't, they go, eh, because it's not their kind of song. And I understand that. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? I do. I, mean, I do, I, but I, write, think there I, some, I think there are some elements that have to come together to be considered a great song. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you can play a great reggae song into a, to a people who don't like reggae, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can play them a Bob Molly song, and they go, eh, you know, because it's not that kind of music. And I've right. seen that happen a lot. But I think people appreciate a well-structured song, even, yeah. you know, a well-produced song. And it's great. I mean, I play covers also, and I do. Remember that song, Drift Away? Yeah. It took me a while before I braved sing, uh, singing that song and also learning the riff. And now I know in certain circles, people just love it and gets them all singing along. And, 
you know, it's just that's a great feeling. And if they can do that with your song, that's even better. Right. Well, let's talk about the last one you have here, which you said was a heavier song. Well, oh, yeah. It's, please yeah, disregard. Yeah. Well, that one came out of. Um, sometimes I'm over the years I've been in a relationship, and I uh, I end up end up talking, and I don't know when to stop. Uh oh. I don't mean just about information or facts. I just get myself into a corner, emotional corner, and I I want to stop. I want to. I want to, I just don't know when to stop. So I want to say, all right, just please disregard all that stuff you just heard. <laughs> it's like there's a redo. <laughs> a redo. And so that's one side of the song. The other side of the song was if you're with someone for a long period of time, that you start not recognizing the other person. You say after a year, it's like, who is this person? You know, it's like something, they're not the same person I was with before because we all change. Mm. And so in your relationship, you're not really defined. It's not defined anymore. You're kind of like with a stranger. Yeah? Right. And so there's both sides of that. In the scene. And then I just, it's uh, it's in 6-8 and there are 3-4, and which is a great thing to write in. And um, I just started developing it because I was playing it acoustically. In fact, my bassist said, Maybe we should keep it acoustic, you know. I just really wanted to add drums, and then I added a great violin player, Joe Kessler, and and then I added, hey, I'll put some slide on it, and just it just kind of developed, it's just you know, and I wanted to make sure that the production didn't take away from the song, which is an art in itself. You know? Right. Well, let's hear it. Please disregard. Please disregard. <laughs> sit here as long as it takes I won't go when I'm put on grace I'm as stubborn as a man could ever be so I won't let you go away from me tonight is different and I want to know why I can feel it and I can see it in your eyes the way Like I was bringing you to your doom So tell me your story to please no more lies I'll be listening and I want to emphasize I want you to know how to make it all right But I need you to be told to turn out the light Oh, though I know how it is I'll 
up as big as a man could ever be So I won't let you go away from me Okay, and we're back on the ranch with Kenny Seltzer, a really sweet song. Tonight we are going over seven platforms. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And if there are any artists watching tonight or um, uh, at any time, um, and you'd like to be an artist on the ranch, there's a little annoying tag going across. Just hit my website shows and there's a form that you can fill out and nice celtic undertones coming off yeah. that was batteries day was is that was that a petty pedal steel or what was that that was a slide i was playing slide and electric a slide all right and, and um yeah i didn't i didn't i don't play dobro so i just played slide and there was also mandolin i forgot about and should i play um and an accordion sound oh i missed that oh the, right okay i thought it was just a keyboard well i play keyboard but it's i don't play accordion but I'm, i i i wanted to do the accordion sound so there's a lot in there it just uh there's tricky arranging things so things they get in the way of each other right yeah. like you said you you want to enhance the lyrics and the tone of the song yeah, I mean, production is, you can easily just overpower the song. And so the production becomes the center. You don't want that. Right, right. So, Kenny, what's up next for you? What are you working on? Well, I have live shows. So that's pretty much what I'm working on. I have a solo show, a um, place called The Black Sheep in Worcester, Massachusetts, this Thursday. And then I'm playing a, a restaurant bar next week with Steve. Um, 28th. That's in. It's all on my website. Um, I just try to trying to book gigs. That's I love live playing. And as I said, if I can get this, uh, I'm also working on a radio play, a podcast radio play, which is tedious in itself. I have a little bit of help with that, and um, it's hard to break through, which you know, I'm sure. You know what people I know. I am actually joining the radio world. I am taking the ranch um, to a new radio show mm -hmm. called Roaming on the Ranch. <laughs> um, start, starting at the end of April, May. Um, and it is curating songs and just getting them lined up and <sighs> Yeah, yeah. It's a whole is so you're gonna you're gonna pick songs and play them. Yeah. You're gonna make a show or you're gonna do it live right there. I'm going to make a show. I'm going to do it live, but it's going to stay up so people can catch it. Yeah. Right. And so best wishes for that. It's a, it's a great world. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind doing a DJ again, but it's a whole different, different world, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm looking into airplay. Um, um, my stuff is on Bandcamp, of course. And, you know, you can go to my website and 
go to links to go buy you can download my songs or buy you can actually buy a physical copy if you wanted to and um just just keep on plugging away and hopefully i can get it together to do another album i have the songs it's just a lot of work a lot of energy that's exciting and i always encourage anyone who's listening to go to the websites if you're gonna if you want to buy uh songs that way the artist keeps most of the you know the in the 99 cents or whatever you're buying right. if you buy it from other sites there's there's so many intermediates that you know have their hands in the pot you know especially right. spotify right. itunes and stripe who processes the order and everything else yeah so, spotify is i mean i i i'm on spotify but i don't really push it you know i don't look for new playlists um yeah, that's where the play is, but yeah, I mean, I I get so little, we all get so little from that. I mean, <laughs> so what that is, is true. Uh, what's what's the in some ways what's the point of spending so much energy on trying to get on playlists on Spotify, other than trying to get people to come to your site? You know what? Like when people are booking, you'd be surprised. Like even when I'm booking the show, I sh I check socials. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I check all of that stuff. So I'm on Facebook and I do do Instagram once in a while and do do Twitter or X, whatever you call it now, once in a while, not too often. A friend of mine, it's a promoter, says thinks I should do Instagram and Twitter a lot. So just, right. I'd rather play. <laughs> I'm right. And I don't right. have a team, you know, I don't have people to help me out um, too much. It's a lot, a lot of moving parts in this business. Yep. And you go where your heart is. You like to play. And I, I love to play. Live playing is, is really, I really enjoy it. It's, it's kind of like the adrenaline, it's the excitement builds. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, um, so I, I love that part of it. Like you feel alive, you know. Right. And that's why you do what you do. Yep. Yep. All so, right. Well, thanks so much, Randy, for having me. Well, thank you so much for submitting your material and joining me on the ranch. I want to thank everyone who is watching um, and continues to watch week after week on all our platforms. Check out Blast Music 24-7. You won't be disappointed. And we are here every Monday night, 7 Eastern time on the ranch. And just hang out.